Because of you guys, and the overwhelming amount of support you showed on my last Unity video, I decided to slip back in to the boots of Arno, the man with the missing face. If you missed the last episode, allow me to get you caught up. Just kidding, go and watch the last video you lazy bastards, it's not like you've got anything better to do in quarantine. And yes, I called you bastards because I know about your parents' premarital sex. If you ever think about committing such a sin like your parents, just remember the Lord sees all. So yes. He knows you forgot to return that book to the library eight years ago, and you will be punished for it. Anyway, where we left off in the last video, we had just broken out of prison like our name was Michael Schofield, and the edgy guy from the corner of our cell asked us to join the assassins. So I thought, not really doing much else with my life, might as well become an assassin. But on my way to find the edgy guy, I came across a group of people who sounded like they were having the most British orgy ever. It's true, that's really how British people sound when we're having sex. When I'm about to drop a load in my pillow, instead of saying I'm gonna bust, I do indeed say the caviar is being plated. I find myself looking for the edgelord in a beautiful chapel, which is also filled with all of the people that make better content than me on YouTube. Obviously, I'm joking, I don't make the best content on YouTube because there's people out there like this guy, who put in all the hard work of stealing other people's clips and putting them into a Fortnite compilation video. Now that's top quality. After looking around for a few minutes, I then find why he asked me to come here. The smoke is an obvious sign that we're about to get a bit wild. Not quite as wild as that one time though, when I went beyond the fill line on my G Fuel powder. Let me tell you, I was gaming so hard I thought I was actually doing something meaningful with my life, and then I realised I was just playing The Sims, still failing at sleeping with women. I don't even want intercourse, I just want the feeling of a warm body that will actually stay warm. It turns out that I have to do a small puzzle in the chapel, which opens up a dark, decrepit looking pit. It actually has a striking resemblance to Sniper Wolf's content. Completely fucking lifeless. Arno must be a massive Jeff Hardy fan, because he swantons into that pit with more confidence than I have in any social situation. In this pit that we have just swanton bombed into, we do indeed find Edgelord, and he's once again being edgy and mysterious, just creeping against the wall. I actually have no idea how Arno survived that swanton. There was either one of those magical hay carriages that make all assassins immune to fall damage, or there was just the corpses of the first 100 people that tried to jump down there, cushioning the landing. This dark and decrepit pit actually turns out to be a place that the assassins have been hiding out in for over 600 years. This place gives me some serious Illuminati secret society vibes, as I imagine this was the kind of place that the royal family went to when they have their meetings about killing Jeffrey Epstein, Princess Diane, and probably many, many others. As we arrive in the main room in the assassin's pit, I then get surrounded by four old men in capes, and I'm once again getting secret society vibes. There's three options on the table, where I'm either about to be touched up, we're going to sacrifice someone to the devil, or we're going to play three rounds of bingo. Are you prepared to travel the eagle's path? If that's a fancy way of asking, do I want your help? Yes. Then drink. Well, I guess I was kind of right and wrong. I didn't put Rufy as one of the options, but that's what appears to be happening. However, I was right because when I wake up from said Rufy, I can guarantee you my asshole will definitely be needing some soothing cream. The Rufy seems to be sending us on some mad trip, and honestly, this doesn't look too bad. I kind of want to try Rufy now. I might just buy some and become the first person to Rufy themselves. I would say that someone could slip one in my drink while I'm at a bar, but I never go out to bars. I never go out in general, really. While on this trip, Arno sees his father dying, recalling to that day when he was just a young boy and he lost his dad. Losing a father is a very sad thing to happen, but it's not all bad. I mean, at the end of the day, shameless rebound sex only comes from girls with daddy issues. I wake up from this trip on my knees with four old men surrounding me in capes, and it's not a situation that I haven't seen myself in before, but being inducted into the assassins is definitely something I haven't done. Don't get me wrong, I have the athleticism and the skill to be an assassin, but there's just this one thing that you need to abide by that I don't think I could follow. Stay your blade from the flesh of the innocent. Don't get me wrong, I'm not some crazed killer that would go around assassinating innocent people, but when the prisoners escape from my basement, I think that having an assassin's blade would be a lot more useful than doing my usual tactic of laying out banana skins in front of them. It would take away the comedic value of watching them slip on said banana skin, but it would also keep me a lot safer. Those banana skins really do come out of nowhere sometimes. So this was it. I was finally an assassin, finally free to explore Paris. Nothing, nor no one, could hold me back. Welcome back. 
Oh, now that you've experienced life as an assassin. Fuck. Say, literally no one cares. Ah, finally. I don't have to listen to her anymore. I've got something else for you. But Are you serious? One of the best things about this game is the customization. And I decided that as an assassin, I needed to be as stealthy, silent, and sneaky. Well, they all mean the same thing, really as possible. So I went with a colour customization that I knew wouldn't get me easily seen in big crowds. Now I know you're all judging me, thinking that I'm incredibly stupid, but would a stupid man want to encourage wasps to be around him at all times? No, didn't think so because they're extremely loyal companions. I meet Edgy Guy, whose name is actually Belek, to see what's going down. He briefs me on the mission and says get my ass into position and don't ask questions. While I didn't expect this from Balak this early, I didn't have any complaints really. I mean, he's a nice, gentle, handsome guy. At least that's what I thought until I realised I was getting the wrong end of the stick. Standing there on the roof with my arse out and lube in hand, he asked me what the fuck am I doing, and I said getting my arse into position and not asking questions. He tells me, however, this is what we're going to do to assassinate someone and not bum each other. Now I was feeling quite embarrassed, but I decided to just be quiet and let my blade do the talking, which funny enough is also so what my babysitter said after they said get your ass into gear and don't ask any questions. Our assassination target looks like a distant relative of John Joe Shelvely and Belek had this one under control, but at the same time as assassinating him, he managed to give me the biggest jump scare I've had in the video game. Cretin, when have I Christ, Belek, warn me when you're fucking jumping off the roof. So after having a small heart attack, Arno was then frustrated that we didn't go after Suver, who was there at the meeting with John Joe Shelvely's relative. Suver, in case you forgot, was the man that killed Monsieur de la Serre, the person who looks after Arno after his father died. So Arno brought his frustrations to the Council of Assassins, threw a small temper tantrum and managed to get his way. Finally, we were given permission to assassinate Siver. Finally, it was my chance to assassinate that snail-loving man Siver, and naturally, to get into practice mode, I had to take out a couple of people on the street. Unfortunately, you can't kill innocent people in this game, so I had to take out some misbehaving guards, which seemed to upset quite a few of the locals, even though I was doing them a massive favour. Some people just don't realise when you're doing them a favour. Like my ex-girlfriend. Her cat wants bitter, so I proceeded to give it a peach of a volley, curling it into the top bins. But immediately after, she broke up with me, telling me I was a sick freak for doing a knee slide and celebrating that absolute worldy of a goal. There was a glimmering chest on the floor, so I decided to spend all of my skill points on unlocking the lockpicking skill just so I could get it. What do you know though? I completely fail and run out of lockpicks. I'm really just starting to feel like I can't do the right thing no matter what I do. Like when my friend told me he was going to give up alcohol, so I bought him shitloads of methamphetamine for his birthday, and he's since OD'd. I feel like it was partially my fault. So here we are. We arrived in Notre Dame, rest in peace, and it was finally time to take my revenge on the heavy set fellow who killed my guardian. Belek runs me through an epic montage of all the different things that I can use to get into the Notre Dame, all of the different ways that I'd be able to assassinate him, and yet I just go for a, a door on the roof. Pretty standard, really. But it's like my weird neighbour used to say. It doesn't matter how boring, how bland, how underage, if you have a key to their door, invite yourself in. I knew that in the confession boxes, you could assassinate Siver, so I jumped into one, hoping that he would appear on the other side. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay in there for very long though, because whoever was confessing before me clearly was very nervous about what they were saying and dropped an absolute stinker. I'm talking straight methane. So on my way to finding a new hiding spot, I took out a guard right in front of a crowd of people, and then they all saw of turned around and started paying attention to something. It really did take me a while here and I thought it could be the dead body but then I realised it was the cat. How wholesome eh? We're surrounded by beautiful architecture and yet the cat still gets the spotlight. After all this time waiting and all the planning it was finally time for me to take out Siver and I figured out the best most secretive creative assassination that I could possibly do. Just your bog standard backdoor entrance. Now while some people may see this as boring I instead think this beautiful poetic justice. He was no one special, he was just a bit of dirt on the ground and I took him out like he wasn't anything special. And that may or may not be an excuse as to why I assassinated him like that. I definitely didn't just get bored and decided to do it normally. It felt good for this chapter of my life to finally be over and watch him just drop to the ground. But just when you thought Arno might catch a break, the whole world started falling apart and we became desynchronized. 
yet more boring Abstergo shit, so I'll save you guys the trouble of having to watch it and do the outro now. Thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you do want to see more Unity or any other Assassin's Creed game, please be sure to drop them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to check them out. It really does mean a lot to me how much you guys supported the first video, and I just can't wait to jump into some more Assassin's Creed action and keep on providing you guys with the content. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.